welcome and good evening to the Jonathan Association uh, April uh, 2018 regularly scheduled board meeting. Um, we have concluded the session of open forum. Uh, with that said, I will call to order. Uh, the first item on the agenda is to approve the agenda or I will make uh, entertain a motion to uh, adopt an agenda as amended if anyone has anything they would like to add. Move we adopt. Actually, I, um, excuse me, I was just wondering if we could add the idle house discussion to old business. Okay. I just have some um, ideas I wanted to share regarding that. Also, I'd like to add the vacant board seat okay. to discuss. Kind of under new business. Mm -hmm. All right. mm -hmm. Pardon my voice, but it's my what I come out with. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to have <laughs> you back. Mm. Anything else? I entertain a motion to adopt adopt the agenda as amended. To adopt the agenda as amended. A motion and a second. I second it. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. All right. Next item on the agenda is the uh, secretary's report, uh, essentially approving the 2018 uh, minutes. Uh, if no one has any uh, edits or suggestions, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the March 2018 meetings as presented. Can I second that? Second. 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 I just adopt, I, I, I entertained a motion. Okay, I'd make a motion to adopt the minutes as presented. I second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next time on the agenda is to accept the March 2018 financials. So Stephen, uh, I believe there was um, some, some errors on the printed version. There was under the um, comparison, which would be page eight. It was printed from 2000, March of 2001 through March of 2018, my apologies. I did send out an email version that should have your correct numbers for March 2018 only, and then an annual. Did everybody receive that? Yes. Okay. So it looks like the year to date was, was correct. It was just the, the March specific, correct? Yeah, it would be your three left-hand columns starting on page eight. Mm -hmm. That would not be correct. Okay. So my question is, how can we? I think what I would suggest next time is, if you get if you get a chance, I think it would be good to have a printed off copy, just so that when we do present these, sure, uh, and then we we vote to approve them, we have a clean way to do so. And uh, next time you won't have that error. Sure. sure. <laughs> Did everyone have a chance to, to look at the the March uh, budget comparison report? If you didn't, then I think we you know we, we could take some time to do that. I want to make sure that if we do approve them, that everyone is fully aware uh, of of that budget comparison report. Crickets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, okay. I did review as best I could and other than the date issue. I didn't find any malfunctions. Okay. So if no one else has any other comments, I move to adopt it, to accept it. Yeah, see, if you look at some of these, like uh, below on administrative expenses, even under the year-to-date ones, it looks like we actually spent 63.65 on on audit. Oh no, sorry, that is correct. My bad. I thought it was election. I was reading that incorrectly. Strike that from the record. 
Okay, so it does look like our year-to-dates are correct, so I, I would concur with Steve that it looks like our year-to-date uh, budget comparison report is on track. Mm -hmm. Steve, did you make a motion? I did. I made a motion. A motion to and to uh, do, I, do I hear a second? Then I'll second that. Okay, motion, any second? Any further discussion on the matter? All in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. All right, next item is the management report located on page 14 of your packet. I'll open the floor up to you, Stephen. Um, I do want to make note under the first section, the informational items, financial statements. Um, I do note an error under the operating fund balance. It says December 2017. That should be January 2018. Just so that the board is aware. The other numbers are correct in the fact that as of the end of March, you are under budget by $3,426.19. Currently in the operating fund at the end of March, $864,075.51. Reserve balance at $521,528.19. Um, under section, or uh, number two, board directive update, the 2018 calendar is in for you and our next board meeting she didn't update that either so I will take care of that my apologies change of ownership report showed zero um, and encompass update I did speak with one of the partners at encompass they are in the process of putting together a new report for um, Karen house I told them how we felt about what was presented to the board and uh, he agreed and so they are going to put that back together in something that makes a little bit more sense and logic once i have that i'll get that out to the board can we ask, uh, can I ask a question on that certainly uh, thank you so in terms of that encompass update i believe we we have uh, remitted uh, somewhat of a payment to to that vendor mm -hmm. uh, for services rendered um is there any um, understanding or at least some type of agreement moving forward as to the work they're currently doing now uh, are they we're, how is that conversation gone is there any anything they're able to do with us to make sure that the quality of their of their, of their product if you will is up to our standards or expectations that was expressed to them and we are not being charged for any work that they're currently doing okay okay 10 4. I have a question on that Stephen yep traditionally there's before Encompass goes out to do any work, there's a contract, and that contract is signed most often by the property or by the president of the board and sometimes um, by the property manager. Was there a contract that was written with Encompass? I haven't found one as of yet, and that was something that was put in place when Natalie was still managing the property. So generally, Encompass has copies of those um, and I know in my experience, I've been able to go back to them and, and ask for a copy of the contract. And I'm just wondering if you could do that and then provide that to the board. I will certainly ask for it. Thanks. Please continue. One second. Um, okay, Idle Road, um, City of Chaska did call and ask that the Bushes and trees be trimmed back off Idle Road between Baxter Court and Idle Circle. I did go out and look at those um, with Vern, and yeah, they are definitely way into the road, so those will be some of the first ones that will get trimmed back here shortly. <coughs> the Idle House parking lot, <coughs> I did go out and look at that as well, and it was probably, I gotta say it's a five foot across sinkhole that needed to be filled. Um, it has been filled at this point with class five. It has not been asphalted at this point, but it is not a safety hazard any longer. Um, she did note in the packet um, violations for neighborhood uh, eight and 12. Correspondence um, is the letters report. I don't know if that's a report that the board has seen before. Um, I know Judith is familiar with it but we had over 60 letters that went out just this past month. Um, and that starts on page 52. 
welcome dues letters, violation letters, any fines that were dealt, statements, warranty deed requests. Um, just so the board's aware, um, one of the big things that I've been working on has been the delinquencies. And um, I'm finding in talking with a lot of these homeowners that when they bought their homes, they were never told by either the title company, the realtor, or the previous owners that not only were they part of a sub-association, but they were part of a master. And so the title or the warranty deeds were never provided to us in regards to their master dues. So that's been a big project. Um, but you can see in the delinquencies, we made quite a bit of headway since January. So. Next items would be item action, action items for the board. Um, you'll find your tot lot, page 16. There are three different um, scenarios. There's option one, which I believe, did she send to you in color? Should look like this. No, I think mine was black and white. Well, she has not emailed that to you in color. We will get that email to you in color. But these are very, very vivid. <laughs> and they probably are in your electronic version if, if she did email that out to you. Um, three different versions that were proposed by Miracle. First one rolling in at $31,815. And that's going to be page, pages 16 through 18. You're legal. Page 20, the option two through page 22. That is $36,170.94. And then option three, which starts on page 24. Through page 26 is $46,423.17. <clears throat> board to review these. And if any one of these options is an option that the board likes, um, that you can make a motion on that. If you haven't had time to review, then obviously you can review and after meeting time. I have a question. I had asked Carrie about um, what was being laid down on the ground. Correct. Um, on the estimate it says wood chips or something. Correct. Um, she was going to look at pricing for other options as well. Okay. I don't know if you have any of that information. I do not, but I can get it. And I want to say that he was suggesting pretty much what's approved. I will ask him. So the wood chips we would probably have to maintain every year, do you think, every other year? I've seen tot lots that haven't had wood chips replaced in years. Um, I do see that from time to time that they get used, and I don't recall them ever being switched out or anything like that. I guess the one thing I would, can I ask a question? Is that okay? Um, I think what I like to see is options. Um, the other thing that I'm, I'm having some thoughts on is, in the past, what the board has done at times is approved a dollar value mm -hmm. from, 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 from ground zero, right? And from there, we've gone out to bid to several different parties uh, just to confirm that we're receiving a, a competitive quote, if you sure. will. Um, do you think that, in your experience, that there would be at least another option or two uh, that we could uh, do some price checking on? As far as other companies? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure we can. I know Miracle is one of the larger ones out there, mm -hmm. um, but we can certainly search for another bid. Do you um, know who we've is used there a in the past? I'm sorry. Do you know who we have used in the past? I do not. No. I don't recall building a tot lot in. in, in since I've been on the board. Uh, the tot lots were all put in by the developers. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was the um, agreement was that they would be 
put in by the developer and then maintained by Jonathan. And the two that are in that neighborhood already were put in in the 2001, 2002. Um, and that was um, gas and started managing in 2008. So they wouldn't have it in their records, but they're, they would be in the Karen house. And, and <laughs> it would take some digging. Right. But actually, the, the brand name is, is also on the equipment at the tot lot that's um, the two other tot lots that are uh, in the Clover neighborhoods have the brand name of the um, tot lot of the maker on it. So that might be a place to start. But it, my recollection is that um, there was $25,000 that was set aside for this project. So I was surprised to see three bids that were so much you know, higher than that. And <clears throat> I'm not opposed to spending more than 25,000, but I don't, I don't feel good about jumping all the way up to 46. Mm -hmm. um, because there are probably going to be other costs as well, like um, picnic tables or trash, you know, containers and so forth. Um, so I, but I, I agree with, uh, with Justin, I'd like to see another company, a bid come in from another company and something a little bit um, in that 25000 to three, 30000 range. Okay. And just to note that it looks like Neighborhood 3 is also due for some work on a tot lot. Board has roughly $57,000 earmarked for tot lot improvements this year. Okay, for both projects Total. together? Okay. Oh. And it, you know, personally, I think. You know, maybe we will end up spending more than the twenty-five thousand, but I, I would like to see another company throw their hat in the ring. Okay. Although I am quite partial to the little ladybug, I thought it was quite cute. <laughs> 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 All right. Does the board have any thoughts on, uh, you know, first of all, it's it's us wanting to get at least another quote, if you will. Um, but I think in general, what I what I hope to do tonight is at least take the temperature on, on do we identify and do we try to, to assess, you know, a capital improvement spend, if you will, so up to a certain amount. Yeah, I think um, that's a good idea. And then that would allow management to have some good parameters and some constraints on how we go about moving forward, uh, subject to approval uh, mm -hmm. by the board, obviously, in regards to a contractor mm -hmm. or a given bid. But in general, I think it would give them a more of a ironclad idea of what we would expect in terms of how much we want to improve and how much we want to spend this year. Mm -hmm. I agree. So I make a motion that we allocate $30,000 for a tot lot in Juliet Park. A second. A motion and a second. Any further <clears throat> discussion? I have a question. So. Steve, did you just say that between neighborhood three and this project, there was 57,000 allocated? Correct. Okay, so if we're saying 30 for this project, that would leave 17 for that project. Do we know what's needed that on that? That would leave 27. 27. Or 27. Do we know what's needed on that? It's a lot smaller of a, of a tot lot. Yeah, it's a lot smaller, okay. and my understanding is just kind of a refresh. From talking with Carrie, I haven't physically seen that lot yet. Okay, so if there's 27 for that, and we're giving 30 for a brand new one, and I, I would I would ask the board to probably allocate a little bit more on the Juliet Park Park because that is a brand new build. Yeah. And less for a refurbish on Neighborhood Three, if there's already something there existing. Well, my other question is. Um, when you talk about wood chips as opposed to a different kind of base or whatever, that might increase the value or the cost even more. I don't know, because I don't know anything about, you probably do, Clint. Do you know what your kids like to play on? I mean, <laughs> kids can get hurt with wood chips or I rocks know. or anything. So. Yeah, I know. 
Um, obviously, like the sport court is the safest, but it's also going to be super expensive. Oh, sure. And, th and what we're doing now is we're not choosing wood chips for an option. No. We're trying to allocate. Yeah. Right. right, right. But so if we're saying 30 and 27, maybe we could change that. Make it more, maybe even make it more open. It's logical. So I think we, this is a starting point where mm -hmm. when we go out to bid, then we can tell our vendor they're looking for something in the $30,000 range, which is not to say that if the vendor comes back at 35 or something that the board can't mm -hmm. change their mind. Sure. But I, I think right now what we've got in the budget is 25000 So I don't think we want to go at this juncture too much higher when we go out to bid. I'd like to, you know, say in that neighborhood, and then if they come back with bids that are 35 or something like that, then. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Mm -hmm. So will you have a motion and a second? Do we have further discussion on the matter? Well, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Um, so I think what that does is it, allow, it now leaves us with you know, a balance, if you will, on, on the tot lot neighborhood three. Uh, if we do go completely new there, is that an option? In neighborhood three? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I'm gonna look at it honestly as, okay, we have 57,000 between the two. Mm -hmm. What can we do for both with that money? Okay. I mean, that's the way I would attack it if okay. I'm gonna go out and pull these bids. And it's I'll go take a look at Neighborhood 3 with um, mm -hmm. Carrie and Vern and just really look at it and see, okay, what, what do we really need to do there? Mm -hmm. Is it a $10,000 job? Is it a 20? And if it's 20, then we've got 37 sure. to go towards Juliet. Seem fair? Yeah, I think so. What, Neighborhood 3? Give us an idea where that's at. It is... Well, you live in neighborhood three? Oh, do you? It's right behind my house. So oh, we're at by, where the bridge run out. Up there by Warner Circle? Yeah. And, oh. It's hidden. It's not. You can't get to it from the street. It's kind of behind a bunch of houses. So you can only get to it through the paths. Okay. But it's not very much area, and there's a huge oak tree on it, too. So it's not a lot of space to work with. So I'm assuming it's going to be much smaller than anything we're looking at here, if we redid it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you think it needs to be redone? It's pretty old. I mean, okay. I don't think it was on the reports for a while, so I think it's been neglected for quite some time. But it could probably use... Is it made out of wood? It's not made out of wood. Okay. No. And it doesn't show any signs of, like, rust or anything real bad. I don't know that it needs to be completely replaced, but an update is definitely due. Facelift. Yeah. Okay. That's good to know. Okay. So I think that gives you some direction, Stephen. I think the totals are there, or the willingness amongst the board to allocate dollars towards this initiative is there, in generally speaking. I just think that it would really help the board make a really, you know, uh, solid decision if, if we had something to compare a quote to. No, so. I completely understand. Okay. Next item up was the approval of the canoes application, which is on page 31. This is from our last board meeting. Um, this is roughly the rental agreement. Mm -hmm. so I'll leave that in the board's hands at the moment if, if that's something we want to discuss. Has it been dis uh, discussed with legal? It has not been discussed with legal. We basically copied another city's. And okay. Put Jonathan's name on it. Well, again, I like the, you know, we've uh, essentially indemnified ourselves for a variety of different uh, instances or any other cause. So we've the, gone pretty far with it, I think. I think one thing we need to add is if it's not removed by a certain date, the consequences of that, either they won't be able to rent next year or the canoe was impounded. And if it's impounded, then how does the resident get the canoe back? I think that would be a good we did talk addition about that. to this. Mm -hmm. We did talk we did. about that. But I don't see it on here. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it brings up a good talking point. I think that we would, if anything, 
we could certainly come up with a time frame, if you will, and when the canoe ra canoes need to be removed by. Uh, unless the board is going to look at this as a, you can store your canoe here all year long. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know that, that that's what people had suggested last month at our meeting. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I, I think we could come up with a day. And that way they're signing it too, so they agree to mm -hmm. that term mm -hmm. of using the canoe rack. So canoe racks will be assigned to Jonathan residents until May 1st. After May 1st, non-residents will be considered a spot based on availability. Mm -hmm. I think if we add a sentence that mm -hmm. discusses all canoes will need to be removed by October 31st okay. of, a, of a given year. Um, if they are not removed, then I think, Three. well, I don't know if we find them or if we tell them that you will remove it at our cost and we will we will, they will be responsible for uh, paying for that. Responsible for the removal and or storage of. Mm -hmm. So if we add that, mm -hmm. I, I think we need to get this in place tonight. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. we're going to have people start to come to, come to us. If we have a canoe rack available for them to store their canoes. Do we want the lawyer to look at it first before we, just so we know legally we have our bases covered? It's up to the board. I don't, I don't think that we need to do that. Okay. I just, I mean, yeah, I'm just my opinion. I, I think <laughs> if we add that verbiage that was just discussed, I think we're fine. And would you like that right above where it says release? Yeah. I don't mean to belabor the point, but uh, before the canoes were there and they were there all year long. So what's, what does it hurt if we charge them so much a year and they leave them there all year long? I think it's the opportunity for other residents to store their mm -hmm. there. If they can't get in, then maybe next year they can. Yeah. But as okay. far as like the terms, What's wrong with like having a one-year term for rental as opposed to six months? Yeah. yeah. Essentially. That'd be easier for the people that store yeah. them, I think. So May to May. Is that what you think? Yeah. May first to May first. May to May, and then if you renew, mm -hmm. you get to keep your canoe there. You don't have to go down and move it yourself. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a thought. So would, would we be leading it there over the winter months? Mm -hmm. If it's up to the resident, obviously, like yeah. they have a space reserve, they can use it or they can't. I don't know if canoes are good to stay out during the winter or not, but we would leave it up to them and then let them know I guess starting that, April 1st. I don't see that hindering us if, if, let's say they did not sign up for another year by May 1st, that canoe could still be removed and it could be made available sure. for a resident uh, however, we say after May 1st, non-residents will be considered for a spot based on availability. So we're protected there in that sense. But <clears throat> I just want to make this clean as possible. I'm just curious, too. How many canoes can we store down there? Do we know? Six. 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 Okay. Gonna make a motion, and if Wait. it doesn't pass, then do we make a motion already? No, mm. no. Oh, I'm gonna make a motion for the date. Okay. But we don't have to. What do you think? Well, I think we have to come up with our verbiage, and then we can vote on the okay. on the, <clears throat> the makeup of this agreement. Uh, is I think what we're trying to do. Okay. So what do we want to do with dates? Do we have any issue with a one-year term or That's say 11-month term? That's what I was going to say too. Yeah. So if we say that it's 11 months so that they have one month to renew for the following year and then it's open to Jasper residents at that point? I agree. Mm -hmm. So do we want to say canoe rack locations will be assigned to Jonathan residents on a first-come, first-served basis until May 1st? 
or April 1st? It'll be April 1st, I think. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes you can go canoeing in April, mm -hmm. just not this month. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> and then do we say after May 1? Yes, yeah, so after May 1, non-residents can be considered mm -hmm. first spot based on availability. So they essentially have a, a month window to renew or remove their canoe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to write anything down until I, <laughs> I know how you want to word it. And don't we have to be kind of clear that they can leave it there for the winter? I mean, or is it going to go without for the year? Uh, does it go without saying? I think it goes without saying. Okay. I mean, at the end of the day, it's an amenity that residents are able to mm -hmm. use right. for a small fee. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the biggest thing here I think we were all concerned with was the whole uh, issue with mitigating any risk associated with us offering these canoe racks. I think that's handled. Um, my two cents on the matter is I think as long as we have a, a general framework, if you will, of how we want to administer this on a on a month to month or how we term this. I think we can come up with that. Uh, but would it be easier for management if this coincided with like garden plots planning? So like they do the garden plots and you know, I don't know when you do them. March yep. planning, just do it all in one fell swoop in the spring. I don't think that has anything to do with it. I mean, as far as timing. Mm. I don't think it matters. Okay. No. Okay. Well, I think we. <clears throat> I think you have a pretty good idea of what, what those terms need to look like. So starting with canoe rack locations will be assigned to Jonathan residents. <clears throat> there. That would be until canoe rack locations will be assigned to Jonathan residents until Is that April? April 1. Okay, so to Jonathan residents until April 1. period and then after that how do you want to proceed so it says after may or i'm sorry eight that changed that to april one do we need a year no it'd be a, after may one there's a well there's a window there where they can move it away from until april the racks. yeah and then so Leave the window or no? <clears throat> Thank you, keep it. Okay, so then after May 1, non residents will be considered for a spot based on availability. Mm -hmm. And again, did I hear right that you are going to allow a full year then basically on the rack? So if they want to leave it there over winter, mm -hmm. they can. Mm -hmm. So then after spot based on availability, should we enter um, this will be for a one year term? expiring May 1st of, or I'm sorry, April 1st of the following year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so the term is essentially May 1 until April 1. <clears throat> so I will entertain a motion to approve the canoe storage rack application uh, as we've amended it here this evening. So moved. We have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Motion, any second, any further discussion? How about the uh, removal date? There, oh, there, there isn't there any more. Yeah, Never mind. So any further discussion? It was left there and they do not renew their term. Mm -hmm. The release, we should add something to the fact that um, after that April 1st expiration, that if Jonathan has to store that canoe, that there would be a fee. And we can, you know, if you want to consider that a $50 storage fee, and if it isn't picked up within three months, you know, at that point, do we? Mm -hmm consider garage sailing it. 
I think that's reasonable. Well, it would be considered, um, it would be considered basically abandoned property. Mm -hmm. And I think there's actually a somewhat of a statute, I believe, on how you handle abandoned property. So I think we're really try, trying to charge ahead with this. Mm -hmm. And I think this is going to be something that I'm, I'm back and forth on it. I don't know if we have to, to stop what we're doing and try to iron this all out and come back to this uh, with executive committee action in between board meetings. Because it just seems to me like this needs to get ironed out here uh, prior to the next board meeting. Well, I think we're ready to go on it. I mean, I. I or do we want to try the first year and, and okay. see what happens at the end of the first year? And if we have canoes left over, all right. If we have to change the document, we change the document. Yeah, okay. I think Seems like the go. question's been called, so I'll call a vote. All in favor? I have a question. Uh, oh, sorry. sorry. All we, opposed. Motion carries. Next item was approval of the collection policy. Or no, sorry, let me back up. Mm -hmm. Pages 32 through 34 see those. does okay. give you, um, you had asked about a second canoe rack. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, aluminum canoe rack, six canoes, $79. Mm -hmm. It's still I think we wanting. should just see. I think we should see how the first year goes with our current rack. I do too. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, done deal. Okay. Now collection policy. Okay. <coughs> the update for the last board meeting was to change um, the terms. So on page thirty-eight, highlighted. It's probably really dark on your copies. Um, but we did change the repayment term not to exceed one year, and it used to read six months. And then we did also put a new amended date on page 39 of 32718. It just needs to be signed by the board. It can be put in place. So I make a motion that we accept the amended collections policy. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? I'll wait a little bit here, just in case anyone had anything. All right. I'll call a vote. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. I'll just need a signed copy from the board at the end of the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Next item was the bad debt um, that I went back and researched. <coughs> If you look at the last occupied date, this is on page 42. That would be the month and year of any last contact of any kind from the previous owner. And I am unable to locate any of these individuals. We're carrying some debt that goes back as far as 2012. You have a lot that was in 2015. Mm -hmm. So roughly $18,225.30. <coughs> I did email that out to the board so that you had a chance to look at this prior to the meeting. Well, I tried to talk to the board. Um, in, in asking the board to consider writing off these dollar amounts, we can write these off to the allowance for bad debt account so it does not hit your balance sheet per se. You do have money in that account to do that. Stephen, I do have a question on, okay. um, and I know that this has probably been answered before, but the ones where it says status is sold, yep. but we didn't collect at closing, why is, why, how does that slip through the cracks? My guess again is this is where you're coming up against the master versus the sub association, and you have the realtors that frankly either don't know about the master and we're not getting title deeds on these properties, or warranty deeds, sorry. Sub associations are. So these, so that doesn't make sense to me because if we have an outstanding balance, that means that we at some point had to get that uh, title 
we had to get a, in order to build them, we needed that internal process where. Which would be the warranty deed. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so if the title company is not collecting that money at closing. Right, so I, I guess what I'm wondering is if we, if we have the warranty deed and we have been um, billing them, then that means that it's on the title. And so how does this... We don't do know necessarily where that previous owner has gone to. In other words, if they didn't catch it, if the title company didn't catch so it. So that's what I'm wondering is the title company should have caught this. Correct. So mm -hmm. it seems like we're constantly losing money because title companies aren't doing their job. And at what point do we call the title company and say, hey, you know, you guys owe us. You know, for instance, in this first one here, uh, $1,240, that, yep. you know, I mean, I think we need to hold some f people's feet to the fire. I, it's easier for me to look beyond the, like, $185 down here towards the bottom, but, um, you know, those title companies aren't doing their due diligence. They're not supposed to be closing until they get a dues current letter. And nobody's providing that to them. So, like, where, I guess, what I'm wondering is, where is the accountability? What can we reasonably do as, you know, a management company or as a board yep. to try to avoid having all these, you know, because right here we're looking at, like, six properties where... They, we're losing money because the title company didn't do their job. Correct. So bring us through, I know that, so w this has come up uh, in terms of discussion at times over the last several years. I think, you know, there's always a time when we start to discuss these things. And part of what, you Every know, people have come, up bad debt. yeah, <laughs> people have come, well, we haven't written up bad debt in many years, maybe several two, years. Oh, maybe two years, I would but, say. So when you look at some of this, though, my wonder is when you, when you have a, an outstanding balance, right, and you know that there's a potential situation where a claim could be made with the title company, mm -hmm. I think the, the question that I have is how much would we have to spend, and that's our own time, our own resources, would we have to have an attorney pull the title to make sure the Johnson Association and the title is you know, correct, and if that is above what it would take to, uh, you know, what the outcome would be if we were to be successful in achieving or getting this money back, if you will. Does that make sense? But uh, I just want to, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just want to point out that we know that we're on the title. We don't need to pay to pull the title and look at it because Fuller's are, by this point, Fuller has already generally done a lien on the property. And well, does, it, is, does this balance have attorney's fees into it? I'd have to look. Um, if there's a but are we not then... authorizing Fuller until we have $1,500, is that correct? Correct. So anything, you've only got two properties that are over $1,500 on here that Fuller may have sent letters to. Everything else is, is under Fuller letters, if you want to call it, to make it simple. Mm -hmm. I. I'll be honest, I have no other properties that we allow them to get to $1,500 before Tim Fuller's contacted. So, how much of that is title company? How much of that is us reacting sooner versus later? Um, Don't we have an internal process that Gaston helps us with? We do. For the $1,500? Yeah. yeah. So, it does go to Fuller. They will, they will, it technically won't go to Fuller, though, until $1,500. Well, they no, it doesn't go to Fuller. After after three letters are sent, then it goes to Fuller. Then Fuller gets a letter, or Fuller sends out a letter after the three internal letters. That's part of the collections policy. But so we have our. In terms of um, doing lien and foreclosure, that's another, you know, and we probably don't need to go into that into detail. Right. <clears throat> but um, anyway, just I'm just. Uh, Wondering, you know, so this uh, 
it just seems like there's something, when, when there's a, uh, an amount that is as high as this $1,240, it seems like it's worth a phone call to the, to the title company and, and say, you know, I mean, people carry title insurance. I mean, there's all kinds of mm -hmm. um, ways to deal with the situation. So it, I would, I personally would like to see us follow up on some of this. And I mean, obviously not the $185 ones that slip through, but I, I guess I think it's time for a um, finance committee meeting and just maybe dive okay. deeper into mm -hmm. it at okay. the finance committee meeting. Okay. So you suggest that we don't do anything with this, with these, with this bad debt uh, until a finance committee meeting can be held? Is yeah, I don't think suggesting? there's, the only thing this does is clean up our books. And so I, I would say, you know, that we could probably mm -hmm. meet and talk about this, that we have the finance committee meet and just discuss this and then we can maybe bring it to the next. Okay. Does that conclude the management side of the report, Stephen? Um, yeah, I mean, basically, other than Section C, which would be your um, delinquencies, and again, as you can see, that we are reducing them at a pretty steady rate. Mm -hmm. Yay. Oh, nice work. There are copies of the um, free payment plans that we did get in place um, this past month that are in there as well. And then, yes, that does conclude my section of the management report. Okay. So under old business, um, the first item there, world learner agreement. Um, so after the board had approved uh, the agreement last month, um, there was discussion after the fact that we had approved it. Nothing's been completely signed yet as far as I, as far as I recall. Uh, but there was something in there where our attorneys had suggested that rather than sign that agreement, um, and is that agreement in here, Stephen? I do not believe she put that Okay, in so there was a, some instances where we would want the, the other party to be responsible for essentially Jonathan Association legal fees, if you will, if there were to be any sort of circumstances that would come up. So are they rewriting that, or what's the status? I think it's still basically out for a signature. Okay. For signature from who? The board? World Learning. Yeah. Oh, World Learner? Yeah, my, my, my signature. So, but I mean, have, has the attorney made the amendments that were recommended? Yeah, so the, the other side would have to, to sign off on that change. And so that's what we're waiting for? Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah. So I think okay. if anything, this t this item on the agenda is just a topic. Uh, I don't think there's any decision to be made here, so we can move on. Okay. Karen House remodel, you mentioned that earlier. Anything I did. Um, we are in the process of, as you had asked us to look into doing a cosmetic facelift to the inside. Um, so we are still in the process of getting some information on furniture costs, flooring costs, et cetera. Okay. Is that something we'll see in next meeting, potentially? Potentially. Okay. Um, simple window treatments, basically level oars. Um, picked out, but as far as furniture, no. Um, she's still working on that. Okay. Trail system maps? Correct. Um, I can just give a brief update there. Um, what I've asked from Vern and Carrie is that they go out and take pictures of each individual existing sign, number one, then locate them on the maps. <coughs> I also want like them measured, because again, if we opt to go with the city's um, assistance on those I think I've found a way that we can do them and utilize our existing stands, et cetera, and eliminate the water damage that's happened to them and the rust because the screws are drilled through the signs. And again, I think if we can do that through the city, I think we can get some nice signs 
at a very minimal cost. And then my other um, question, I guess, along that is it had been brought up regarding um, historical monuments possibly being placed on some of the trails. And I, again, would ask Judith to discuss with her husband if that's something that he'd be willing to participate in um, as an added, if you want to say, value to the trails. So, I mean, I have asked him about it, and he is definitely willing to do that. He would just kind of need some guidelines from the board as to, I mean, a lot of, so when, when you go on the website, there's a document called um, Walking Along Jonathan Trails, and it essentially hits on some of those historic places. And so I think that, you know, his question would be, um, you know, which ones do you want highlighted or, you know, how, how, uh, what would the word count be and what kind of materials, you know, that kind of thing. But I mean, he's definitely interested in making a contribution in that way. Okay. And I would say, you know, again, the board can interject, obviously. Something size-wise probably similar to what's there. Okay. Material can be determined. And <laughs> when I think of, like, historical markers, when you're going through a national park and you've got a place you pull off on the road and they'll have a you know a marquee mm -hmm. this is what happened on this site mm -hmm. type thing mm -hmm. I, I mean I don't know if that's something that yeah they're like maybe a, a few feet by like three by four feet or something like that need, or even you know yay by Smaller. yay you know maybe even something the size of one of these mm -hmm. pictures I'd be I guess my question to him would be how many historical things so, I mean, are, kind of are out there. I mean, if you look at that, um, if, you, if you look at the document on the website, yep. Walking Along Jonathan Trails, you could, the board could sort of decide for themselves which one they think is worthy of actually putting a marker there for. So, um, you know, that would be, but he's definitely willing to write the verbiage or, you know, take part in that. So I guess the first step in my mind would be, again, how, how many are there? I mean, are there 12 or are there 40? And, you know, then at that point, trying to make a decision, how many does the board want to do? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a conversation that we'd need to have. I would, I would um, volunteer my, myself to, you know, help, uh, you know, if I had the outreach from one of our members, uh, someone like your husband, I could uh, volunteer my time to, you know, help kind of be the liaison, if you will. Establish some sort of, I don't know if it's an ad hoc committee, if you will, but yeah. uh, I could try to put some effort and, and some time into not only uh, you know which stories or which historical events or instances we want to put out there on the trails. I can certainly help with that, and maybe we can present it at a later meeting yeah. uh, on our ideas mm -hmm. and possibly look at some you know supporting management and understanding. You know, maybe a rough cost, if you will, on each of these sites or signs. Mm -hmm. Sure. So. so do you want to have him get in touch with me or so Justin? We're next door neighbors, so Nate will just walk over and okay. knock on Justin. That <laughs> That's easy. Yeah, and they can figure out. They can figure it out. Okay. All right. All right. Idle House. Judith, you, you mentioned to bring that up. Yeah, so um, I am just, w I am willing if the board would sanction it to start doing some research on any grant money that might be available for restoring historic properties, um, be it through, you know, the, the state or the county or what have you. Um, in 2006, the Idle House was designated as a historic property um, because at that time the board, the Jonathan board wanted to knock it down um, and that was, uh, it hasn't been in use for 13 years and so I just think it would be it, that it's, I, I personally think it's time for us to make a decision which way we're going to go on the Idle House. Um, we sort of looked at the eminent domain 
uh, possibility, and, and that was kind of circumvented by the fact that we didn't, the city wants us to have a buyer before they would take it by eminent domain. So um, it might be time to start looking at options um, in terms of should we restore it? Um, it is our property, it's our responsibility, so maybe it's time to uh, at least see what's out there, um, if there's any grant money available, um, and, you know, uh, I suppose it could go many different ways. We could totally restore it and use it as a, an amenity that neighbors could use to have graduation parties and, you know, uh, baby showers and rent it out like a party room would be rented out in a condo. Or um, maybe if we actually had a bathroom and a kitchen in there, it's possible that we might be able to find a buyer without listing it for sale since we're prohibited to list it from sale. And then in that case, maybe the city would be willing to move on the eminent domain. But we're kind of stuck and we have been stuck for about 13 years. And I think it might be, it, it's a, having a negative impact on our uh, ability to get insurance. And so, you know, perhaps the first step is seeing whether or not there is any grant money available to us to help us uh, restore the idle house, should that be what we decided in the future. But, it, I mean, information gathering seems like a good place to start. I agree. So I'm willing to do that, um, and you know, if there's anyone else who wants to get involved, I'd be happy to, um, you know, have a little committee or whatever. But I don't feel like it's my place to do any investigating unless this is something that the board is interested in pursuing. So we've had a lot of discussions mm -hmm. uh, for several years on the Idaho House and. Yeah, like you said, we, we have been stuck. Right. And I, for one, am uh, glad to hear that you, you know, have such an interest in it and are willing to spend time on you know, going out and on this fact-finding mission, if you will, and exploring what options are out there. I think it does warrant effort. And if you'd like to go forward with that, I would certainly support you. Okay. Do we need to vote? No. Okay. <laughs> Anything else on Natal House? Okay. New business. Email blasts. Yeah, we have um, done an opt-in email list, and so that went out about the same time as the newsletter went out, and so. We asked everyone from Gaston's email list if they would like to receive emails from us. And if they do, then they would have to sign up. And you can also sign up on the website. So that forms one list where everyone says, yes, we want to receive emails from Jonathan Association. And so with garage sales coming up, we can use that list to email everyone and say, if you want to have a garage sale, now's the time to sign up. Here's the link. Yeah. And we also had an email go out that was not used during that system. and so. I would like to say that we should probably not send out emails, mass emails to all of Jonathan. Um, it's kind of considered spam, and so I would refrain from it. If you want to send something out to everyone in Jonathan, try and use the opt-in list so that we know that these people want to receive the emails and we're not bothering them. Is there any sort of communication policy that <coughs> lays out guidelines on how we communicate with our residents? If not, maybe that's something we need to create since this is new and mm -hmm. email is the new way to communicate. Could that fall under a, do we have a privacy policy within our website? We do not. We do not. Okay. So we could probably use a privacy policy, like a policy for what we're going to do for emails as well as like social media accounts because um, part of the transfer was we also have social media accounts that we shut down, but we have. So if we're going to do anything with those. We should probably determine what use they have for us. And one one question I had regarding the email, the info in Chaska on the website, who gets those emails? I feel like the whole board should get those so we know what the residents are communicating and wanting us to do. Like if they have a maintenance request or if it's 
some issue in their neighborhood. Do we know who receives those emails? In info at goes to Carrie. Okay. She gets all of those. But every time that someone submits a form on the new website, it is collected. So if you want to see you know, the emails from the last month from the contact form, you can, I can send them to you. I think it would just be interesting to see what the residents are saying mm -hmm. yeah. and how we're handling that, how mm -hmm. the issues are resolved, yeah. the timeline and how we respond to those requests would be interesting to see. I don't know if we have that, but. Well, I think a good start is, is understanding the nature of the requests that we're getting or the mm -hmm. comments or suggestions, if you will. Could that be something that is included in future uh, board packets? That's a question I would have. Mm. Yeah, I guess I don't know how many emails we get, if it would be overwhelming to see mm -hmm. all of that. Or... It's not overwhelming. Okay. Mm. I can pull one up. I'd say in the last, since the website went live, we had 25 people. Okay. So it's not an ungodly amount. Mm. It's manageable. Okay. Clint, do we know how many did the opt-in? I believe it was about 20, 28% did out of wow. a list of 580. Yeah. Well, that's a standard. Mm -hmm. So then the idea would be to coordinate our emails that go out with, you know, flyers going out to the mail stations so people mm -hmm. are seeing the information everywhere. So how would we go about getting a privacy policy, Stephen, on our website? that could be encompassed with everything. My guess is we probably need to talk to an attorney regarding that. Okay. Is that something you want to look into? I think we need one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Particularly when it comes to the, the documents, like for the covenants, mm -hmm. we probably need them to look at that too. Do you want to make that a board directive? Repeat. So, I'm not getting your point about yeah. the covenants. Um, with the covenants, we have them listed on the website. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think it was the web company pointed out that it shouldn't be considered legal advice. You can search for your own. Mm -hmm. But let's say one is marked in one neighborhood, but it's technically in a different neighborhood. So legally, if they're pulling like pulling something from our website and using it in a legal <laughs> argument, and the information was incorrect, <coughs> we should be covered in case that happens. Gotcha. So it'd be held harmless or yeah. indemnify mm -hmm. if you. Will. Right now, it says it says that, but I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. a legal professional did not write it. I think we need to make that a, a board directive to get a privacy policy in place mm -hmm. as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And you want that in regards to the individual covenances, and then. Just general communication mm -hmm. or electronic communication? Yeah, I mean, and, and we won't sell their information. We know we're not going to take their emails and sell them or anything like that. I think there are some somewhat standardized verbiage as it relates to privacy policies that are they pretty well encompass a lot of instances or varieties of situations <laughs> that could arise. But I think we would, we would want to sign off on that um, before it gets published or added to the website in any way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else on email blasts? Should Open. be one going out next week. Oh, really? <laughs> Sign garage up for your garage sales. Yeah, garage sales. Yeah. Yeah. Last yeah. weekend in April. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it's not snowing. Well, I do have one question that came up. Um, how, how do we communicate with residents that we don't have their email? I know we're trying to go this electronic mm -hmm. communication route, but some people don't have emails or they don't want to share it with us. Is that where we post in the mail station or mm -hmm. on the website? Yep, or? both. Okay. Oak Valley sign. So anything, I don't think there's anything in the board packet here, Stephen. There isn't. Um, I've been approached by um, management from 
the Oak Valley neighborhoods um, that they would, they're basically they're asking for two things. They feel like they're kind of stuck way in the back out in right field and they don't feel that they get much from Jonathan. Um, the two things that they've asked for would be a revised neighborhood sign and they would like a small structure around the mailboxes. Now, I do believe Vern could build the mail structure because it's a small, it's not a house like you'd be putting up in some of the other neighborhoods. It's just basically to protect it from the weather a little bit more and to hide it so it doesn't just stand out there. Um, the sign, I will agree, it to me it looks to be an older sign. Um, the posts definitely need restaining and they, they need some form of annual color in their mulch bed around the sign. That's easily done. Um, I have looked at some sign um, variations for Oak Valley. And we could do something that would literally go over the existing sign so we don't have to rebuild a structure, et cetera, um, for about eight, 900 bucks. And I've done everything with the existing Jonathan logo, which would be the Flower J, as I call it. And we also had one created with the new logo, which really looks cool um, for that particular sign. Um, I wanted to bring that up and throw it out to the board that I think it's a relatively inexpensive fix to show a neighborhood a little bit of love, as I'd call it, and make them feel a little better about their dues that they pay to the Jonathan once a year. So I wanted to just throw that out there tonight and see what the board's feeling was on that. Mm -hmm. We do have roughly $7,700 earmarked for signs this year for, um, is it Tuscany? I've seen the sign at Tuscany. I'm not sure where we're gonna spend $7,000 on it, to be honest with you. It's That's what our reserve study, our reserve advisors advise us on. Correct. Um, but I think that sign's in pretty good shape, again, in my opinion. If I recall, the discussion around, during that capital budgeting process, so I'm gonna, I'm going to speak to a couple of things here. That's a, kind of a marquee area of Jonathan, if you will, as people are driving from the east into the Jonathan property, you know, in between Autumn Woods and the rest of Jonathan, if you will. And I think in general, I think the, some of the discussion was we want that to really stand out and, and really look fresh uh, as we continue to invest monies in our silo and some of these signs to, to really show a, a nice harmonized you know, perspective of, of Jonathan with our branding and so on and so forth. The other thing I will say is when we talk about some of these mail stations, um, what I would consider somewhat of a capital improvement or some kind of capital expense, that's something that can be, we can, we can discuss typically going into our budget season uh, for next, for the year after. Um, the sign, uh, the one thing I would point out is that the reserve study doesn't show it to need to be replaced until uh, somewhat later, um, a lot later actually. And one thing I've always felt like the reserve study does for us is it allows us to essentially allocate money on a somewhat impartial basis. You know, we're not the ones, you know, that are ultimately suggesting that these areas are, are in need of improvement. We have a professional who is coming out to advise us on that. And if, if we were to go against what they say, then some people could potentially make, uh, make remarks or uh, interject in circumstances where we are going against our reserve study, if you will. Um, now, the other part of it is, is does that sign make sense for the area it's in? That's a different discussion. The other thing is we should always be looking for ways to improve the, the look of our, of our property. If there's plants and perennials, uh, flowers that could really help beautify that area, I think, like you said, we're all on board for that. But again, this is something that has come up in the past. And uh, just for any other director, if they have any other uh, information to weigh in on as it relates to the sign, I would invite that. But So right before I left the board about a year and a half ago, this discussion came up. The the sign was installed in 2012. Um, mm -hmm. My understanding is that the neighbors were not 
happy with it from the beginning because of the size. Um, it was, uh, it's not slated to be replaced until 2031. The reserve study is just a guide. I mean, we can, we can, uh, you know, flex a little bit, but um, I personally, I like the idea of covering the mail station. I like the idea of planting flowers in there. Um, and, you know, if the board decides to, to put a new sign there, I'm, I'm not going to complain about it. It's just that I, I kind of like the idea of going with the reserve study. And, and if it's not, if it doesn't look bad, I don't know that we need to replace it. And um, so that's just my perspective on it. Is there something wrong with the sign? Like, physically, you can't read it, or no. they just don't like the look of it? Correct. Okay. And it, the, the posts and whatnot do need to be restained. They're flaking, et cetera. And how old is the sign? I'm sorry? How old is the sign? It was put up in 2012. Oh. Okay. The problem with replacing something, because one person doesn't like how it looks, is that the new thing that you put up, somebody else isn't going to like. true. So... That's why it makes it difficult to make a decision based on what one person likes the look of. Well, and it is kind of the neighborhood has a group. Many neighbors in the neighborhood have been unhappy with the signs since it went up. That's the, just the history that I can share. I don't know much beyond that. Did we put it up? Um, it was put up in 2012. By the Jonathan Association, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Gaston was managing. It was Nancy Teske that was the, the at the behind the desk. I mean, yeah, it was us. <coughs> where, <coughs> where physically is this? It is near the. Uh, near pretty close to Lake Grace, actually. Uh -huh. I guess I didn't get a chance to look at the sign either, so I kind of would agree that just because people don't like it, we should go ahead and replace it. I'd like to see what condition it's in first. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we'll table that. Mm -hmm. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. What 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 is the street intersection? Can we figure that out? You got your map? Mm -hmm. I don't have my map with me, so. I don't have a map. Okay. Here's a map. Checking the multi-million dollar map. <laughs> if the board would be okay with it, I wouldn't mind being able to send you out a couple different versions of the sign. Yeah, I think you did send. I think we did get the, the one with the new logo. I did. Yep, I saw that one. I yep, did. You did? Logo. Yep. I did. I believe I forwarded it to them. Okay. Looks like I didn't send yeah. it. Oh, yeah. So um, in terms of the mail what you'd like to do over the mail station. Yep. Is there any way you could just like pencil sketch or kind of do a, like a rough draft of what it would look like or, or describe it a little bit? I'm not really getting it. You want to see my artistry. <laughs> <laughs> so do they have locking mail boxes there? Is that, it's a... It's a yeah, they've got four, I think it's four um, clusters. Okay. Side by side. You know, the nice bright silvery, silvery, silvery colored ones. And we're basically looking at wanting to do, you know, if this is where your mailboxes are blocked, street is literally right in front of it, would be a three-sided house with a roof that would slant up and then this way. The roof can't hang out too far because in that particular street, apparently the mail truck pulls right up to the boxes right. versus actually getting out and physically putting the mail into the clusters. Yeah, could you, could we get a bid from like somebody like TCM to do that rather than burn, just because anytime you build a structure like that, I think you want to, I mean, I'm sure Vern is great at what he does, but if you're going to build a structure, I think you want it professionally done. You want to make sure that it looks right. So I can get bids for it. If that's you fine. could get a bid for, for that and just show us some pictures, then. Okay. Do you know where that 
Map's not good enough. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, it's off a of village road area. In that area. Mm -hmm. A lot of the new constructions going on back, if I remember correctly. Okay. You have to drive mm -hmm. just past it on the left, and then Oak Valley's kind of tucked back in on the right. You don't think they're a different place. Oh. We'll get to it. Village, thank you. So we'll table that until a later date, until next month. Mm -hmm. are you, are, is the rest of the board okay with getting a bid for like a construction company to do the covering of the mail station? Yeah. Are we yeah. doing one already somewhere that? Yes. Is Vern do doing that one or are we? No, no, that, no. that one's We big. approved that last month. Right, yeah. so who's, maybe we can get a bid from them. That's who she's asking oh. me to get a bid from. Did we get three bids that time? So that was part one? of a... That, uh, yeah, you did. So that was, that was a separate part. That wasn't a, uh, a standalone oh. capital <laughs> improvement measure that, that we, we brought before during a budgeting period. That was part of a, uh, I believe it was a policy resolution that was passed that relates to locked mailboxes mm -hmm. and installing those throughout several neighborhoods that had not received those. So we made it a resolution that all... Jonathan probably should have locked mailboxes. Mm -hmm. um, I think, in ge generally speaking, I think uh, we should absolutely look into the potential uh, to have a structure built. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean we have to do it this this year? Right. Not no. Yeah. Um, well, I'd kind of like to. <coughs> so first of all, I've seen Vern's calendar, and he's got a lot on his plate, and I don't think we need to be asking him to construct stuff like that. And plus. I, okay. If something's done, I'd like it to look like it was done by a professional, and I, that's nothing against Vern. It's just that, if, you know. So if you wouldn't mind getting a bid for that's that fine. from TCM, okay. easy enough. And maybe we, and then we can figure out if we can do it this year, or next year. Or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Moving on to tractor discussion. Or do you want me to? Feel free. <laughs> okay. Um, I know this has been a topic of discussion in the past. It's been a sore spot um, as well. Um, but I was asked again by Vern to bring it up at the meeting tonight um, in regards to the functionality or lack thereof of the current Kubota tractor versus um, the Toolcat, I think is what it's called. And um, just trying to get the board's feeling on that. Um, the, to him, the tractor's not functional for what he needs. And I guess he's looking at it going, well, if there's anything that can be done to try and replace that with what would be functional, um, <clears throat> now would be the time while the tractor is still new and, and the trade-in value on it is high. Um, newer. What's that? New, it's newer. Newer. It's a used one. Um, and again, his feeling is that he can find a, a relatively newer used tool cat for a lot less money than a new one. Steve, yeah. did Vern have training on that? I that, can answer that. That was offered, it was offered to him for the training okay, on how to handle that new machine. And if he had training on it, and there's been in-depth study on it, I don't see any problem. Well, it's bigger than what a lot of the trails, apparently, that it, it can't handle or fit on a lot of the trails. It's front end heavy. Um, there's no weight on the back end of it. There are all the weights up front. So that, that becomes an issue. Um, he can't haul, in other words, a, a bunch of tools with him. There's nowhere to put them. And I, you know, I know I sent, um, an email out, I think it may have gone just to Justin. <coughs> there was a list of about 15, 20 different items that, that he had brought up that are just not functional for, for him, for what he feels he needs. So what was he, I'm sorry to be ignorant, but this is not my area of expertise. Um, so what was he using before what he's using now? called a tool cat yeah it's a it's it's a utility 
terrain. <coughs> so what happened to the old one? It was it was determined, um, and other people can chime in here and correct me if I'm wrong, but that that specific piece of equipment we had was not as reliable as when we needed to be. It was during the busy months. We had it in the shop a lot. It was uh, putting a tremendous amount of strain on uh, our maintenance expense that, that related to it. So we had to put it into the shop. We had to rent another piece of equipment to carry out various maintenance <laughs> activities. Uh, so that, again, that's why we went the direction we did to replace it with something. Uh, and the rough cost of the Kubota as compared to? The Kubota, I believe, um, had a value of around $25,000, whereas a, a brand new Tuocat, to my recollection, was somewhere north of $50,000. Um, so again, it, I think what we were looking for, and again, like Judy mentioned, a lot of work went into this study, and one thing I recall was the weight issue with the bucket being able to lift what you had lifted before. And again, it comes back to this whole idea where the, it is front heavy. Yes, the, the engine's on the front, the bucket's on the front. There isn't a, a counterweight, if you will. Mm -hmm. But we were told, and we were under the impression that it could lift more than a tool cat. So I, I, that I'm somewhat surprised. And, and you know, I, I think, in, generally speaking, I think if, if it's not the right piece of equipment, then the discussion we're having is completely warranted. But I just wonder, is there something different even than a toolkit that would be the solution he's looking for? I think sometimes people tend to just go back to what they had before because it really worked well. It was what they wanted. He's used to it, yeah. He knows how to operate yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, weren't these uh, issues brought up when Slate went with you or somebody and went I and talked with to, talk to the manufacturer of the people? Weren't these different issues brought up about what he said about the tools and all that? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that was taken care of, right? Yeah, I mean, again, it's how you, it's, so as a board, right, we're not supposed to essentially is what we're, what we try not to do is say this is how you do your job management, right? We try to provide governance, we pr try to provide direction. And one thing I will say is when you have something like this come up where we can't tell someone how to use the, the piece of equipment, we were told that this could have a higher reach when having a full load than the Toolcat. So again, there, there were benefits that were explained to us in this Kubota tractor, whereas to me it was a no-brainer. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we made the decision based on fact. It wasn't just that we wanted to, to not use a toolcat anymore. We went towards this tractor because it was a, a solution to an issue that we had with having a reliable piece of equipment and something that you could still lift something with. Um, yeah, we, we had heard that it might be a little wide for the trails. Now, again, it's... We try not to say this is how you're supposed to do your job, but I don't know, is there a way not to use the, the trail, right? I don't know, I mean, it just, mm. this has been somewhat of a contentious effort and somewhat of a process that could have been done differently, I don't know. But I don't see where, what we do next in all of this. Well, also, Stephen, I know Carrie told me that, you know, that the back end, it was top heavy. But they ordered a bar or something for the back end to steady that. Didn't they get that put on? I'm aware of a bar or something that was That's supposed to be That's what Kerry told me of that disorder. And then later, Slate said yes, that that was told to him too, that they had put something to balance it so it wouldn't be top heavy. So if that problem's taken care of, then we just have the problem where he's going to put his tools. We wouldn't have to and buy something else. And if he can get down else. all the trails. What? And if he can get down all the trails. <clears throat> it 
It's too wide for the trails or it's too narrow? That's what I'm being told, yeah. It's, it's too, wide. too wide. And on some of the trails where you've got the sharper corners on slopes, there's just, you're not gonna get the tractor down there. Not safely. Was the other machine 100% usable in all those situations? According to him, yes. So what would trade-in on the current machine be? I haven't done any of that research. I wanted to bring it up tonight before I wasted that time to right. honestly find out. I think the next time we come back to this topic, I think if you had a side-by-side -side comparison, and we probably received it at one point, I'm sure it's something Carrie could bring up, but all these specs we're talking about that relate to the, the amount of load that you can lift with the bucket, the width, because I wanted to say the width was only about an inch and a half difference. Um, but again, the toolkit had a real or all-wheel steer, I believe, so it could corner a little bit better, I think. But does it slow down? I think our question, the, some of the questions we can ask, Stephen, is you know, how much slower would someone have to operate that piece of equipment compared to the toolkit? Again, we try to base some of these some of these determinations on fact versus just Correct. someone thinking it's not the right piece of equipment. I understand. And, you know, again, some of the conversation I had with him is, you know, again, if it's a two-person job and say it's at the far end of the property where you could take the tool cat because it has a two-person capacity, it has the, ba the, the box in the back to put their tools, whereas now the tractor's a one-person capacity, so now you have a second vehicle. So someone would have to take the truck. Yeah, so now you've got a second vehicle going out there. Can the truck get in close enough to wherever it is they need to go? Or, Say it's after or, a windstorm. Or they have to walk. Or, or they have to walk. Um, you know, again, those are just some of the things that are were being put out there. And I, I mean, I'm more concerned after seeing the video that I saw of when he was doing something with some branches along one of the main roads, I think it was last fall, and he wasn't picking up, frankly, that big of a load with the like the grabber, mm -hmm. and the whole ass end of the tractor, pardon me, whole back end of the tractor, goes up in the air, and he slams the the bucket down basically to keep the thing from going over. To me, that's a concern. Was he on Safety flat concern. ground? Um, he was on the edge of a road. I wouldn't say it was totally flat, but it wasn't like downhill. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, I'll be happy to get a side-by-side -side comparison. I guess at this point, I, all I would ask is that the board keep that in open consideration. Okay. So that if it is something that we can move on, if we can find something that will fit better for him at a reasonable price, and if we could get a reasonable trade-in value on the Kubota, that it would be something that would be a possible option. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Cool. Newsletter to be mailed with reprint of the 50th paper. Yes, that's me. <clears throat> um, Leo got a hold of Sue at Wagner and uh, brought up about these two 5,000 newsletters that we had printed for the 50th with the intention that they were going to go out to the residents and wanted to know how she could go about doing it. And she, here's what she said. She says, uh, um, after looking at the insert, we think it can be trimmed on two sides and leave as, a, as an eight and a half by 11. So to cut the insert, in, to insert into the newsletter, tap it three times, it will go out with no more postage, no extra postage, it's gonna go out as a flat thing. But she is six hundred dollars. Now the reason why I am really in favor of this is because I was under budget at our fiftieth, and I'm under budget on our newsletter, and I think we can afford this. So this is in in writing, and this for six hundred we could. And she said about twenty two hundred newsletters go out. Okay. So when's the next newsletter? When is Not it? Until go September. Out? September. Okay. So. Well, thank you for all the research and the, 
the information. Yep. So you're saying it'd be a six hundred dollar total expense to trim it, so that could be inserted into the newsletter, newsletter of and it could be just mailed out and tapped and tapped. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they would mail it out. Okay. If that's something you want to do, I would entertain and a it's motion. It's no more postage, she said. I'd like to make a motion that we mail the. What are we calling it? It's really called the insert. The fiftieth newsletter. The fiftieth. <laughs> Newsletter with the next newsletter that goes out in the fall. Thank you. Okay. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Call a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Next time on the agenda, um, as mentioned, um, I, I did notify the board that a one of our directors, Slade Watkins, uh, has has resigned uh, his his position. He is looking to spend more time um, with his family. Uh, he has a lot, of, a lot of work to do at his current job. Um, so I, I did wish him well on his uh, future endeavors and I did let him know that we would certainly welcome him to stay involved with our association. He brought a lot of talents to us. And you know, my hope is that as people continue their committee work to keep uh, <laughs> Slade Watkins in mind for you know, any future community outreach or involvement. Because he certainly wants to stay involved um, he just knows that he couldn't put 100% effort into the association, and he wanted to, but he was unable to do so uh, in the past several months. So we do have a vacant board position pursuant to our bylaws. Um, the board, you know, is empowered to appoint that vacant board position. Um, I don't know if that's. It has to be unanimous. I think in general, it just needs to be a majority of the board mm -hmm. um, to make sure that that we appoint someone. Typically what's been done in the past is we've looked at any instance where we've had a contested election and if there was someone who was not successful in being elected to the board, um, we've gone out to them to essentially gauge their interest in terms of whether or not they'd be interested in joining the board. So we didn't have anyone, uh, we, it was not a contested election this year. So with that said, you know, I would open it up to the floor if people wanted to, you know, how they want to go forward with this. If there's someone someone would like to appoint or nominate this evening, then the board could certainly consider that and make a decision on that. So Mr. The, President, the, I the only reason that Stefan didn't run was to save us some money to mm -hmm. not have a contested, contested election. Um, I believe you're right. He and he also mentioned at that meeting that he would be, if something were to come available, uh -huh. that he'd be interested in stepping up and serving. Yeah. Okay, I'm Mr. President. I do nominate Stephen Wolf for that position. Okay. The nomination. Um, and I we, second that. So we have a motion and a second to appoint Stephen to a, I believe it's uh, roughly two years left on the term. I think we have to look at our. Bylaws, but oftentimes, even if it's a two-year term, um, many times w at the next annual is when you have to vote again. So I think I, I, I know where you're looking, um, mm -hmm. and it's an interesting circumstance there because it's under the section where it talks about officers, uh -huh. whereas there's another portion where it just talks about vacancies amongst the board okay. in the event of a resignation. So, yep. but it doesn't say. Um, it doesn't say officers, it says Jonathan Board of Directors. Uh -huh. So again, that might be an area where there's some amb ambiguity. I'll just have to look at it. I mean, it's, it's yeah. pretty cut and dry. I just don't remember offhand mm -hmm. if, mm -hmm. if it has to, if it would be, so I don't know if it would be a one-year term or if it would be a two-year term, but we could so, figure that out. Yeah, so the appointment would be contingent on you know, the timeline, so to speak. That could be something we come back to, but yep. in general, we do have the ability to appoint someone to act in, in uh, a director's capacity. Mm -hmm. So we have a motion and a second. With that, do we have any further discussion? No further discussion. I'll call a vote all in favor. Aye. 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 All, all opposed? Motion carries. All right. Uh, that concludes our new business this evening. Um, is that something someone wants to reach out to Mr. Wolf on uh, to let him know he was nominated and appointed? <laughs>
you let the record reflect that Mr. Wolf is here today? Oh, Mr. Wolf, <laughs> thank you. Did you join the meeting at 809? <laughs> yes, yes, yay. Stephen Wolf may join the meeting at 809. <laughs> Welcome, Stephen. Welcome back. Yes. Thank you for uh, stepping up and uh, filling your role. Filling our void. Okay, so that concludes everything under new business. Uh, with that said, uh, next time on the agenda is to adjourn the, the April 2018 meeting. I'll entertain a motion to do so. Make a motion that we adjourn. I have a motion. Do I have a second? A second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <coughs> motion carries.